Welcome to the Virgin London Marathon Show and um, I'm joined by a very special guest today, one of the elite runners, um, Andrew Lemontello. It's lovely to have you here with us and a real privilege as one of uh, all the leading Great Britain marathon runner, runner at the moment. Um, how are you feeling ahead of this Sunday's race? Good, confident and uh, itching to race to be honest. You know, I've had a good 10 weeks of training behind me and um, it's just now getting to the start line and go do the business, so yeah, looking forward to it. We're getting pretty close now, less than 48 hours to go, so how are the nerves? Nerves are fine, yeah, I don't, uh, luckily I'm not, I don't really get that nervous beforehand, you know, you get the start line, of course you're going to be nervous, um, but I kind of tried to keep it to that point because you get too nervous beforehand, you could really lose a lot of energy doing that, so um, I try not to think about it as much as possible until race morning, to be honest, and um, yeah, kind of tune out of everything that's going on and um, hopefully get raring to go on the start line. So. It's a really big race for the Brits, obviously, because it is an Olympic qualifier. Yeah. So what, what's Olympic qualifying time for the men? 2.12. 2.12. Yeah. So your PB is 2.13.40. Mm -hmm. So what are we hoping for on Sunday? 2.11.59. <laughs> that's it, yeah. And there's, uh, I'm going out with the 211 pace group. Um, there should be quite a few of us going at that pace. So I always run better when uh, there's competition around me and I can really get into, you know, a head-to-head -head match with people. So um, I'm looking, for, I'm really looking forward to that. Last year I was worried more about the time than anything, and that kind of that didn't help when it got really hard because I got dejected by slow splits and stuff like that. So this year, forgetting about the watch and um, just trying to get competitive with other guys and hopefully it'll turn out a great result for everyone. You had an outstanding debut at London last year with uh, an 8th place overall finish. But going into that race, did you imagine that you'd be finishing top 10? No, not really. Um, yeah, it kind of worked out well for me, I think. Um, I wasn't happy with the time I'd run, just I, I knew I, I broke down a little bit mentally um, running on my own for such a long time. but. It was such an experience, you know, you just only come away from that learning a huge amount and coming through the finish line, I didn't know I was eight, um, but the crowd had just lifted me um, so much over those last few miles and I just finished. Really glad to be finished and um, someone told me I was eight and I was like, that was better than what I could hope for, so it was, uh, it was a great experience. So London on Sunday will be, which, how, how many marathons is that for you? Third marathon, but um, my second marathon that I did in December, I dropped out of okay. uh, with a So, I mean, so yeah, you know, you're, you're running, obviously you, your time is already a great time, but the most exciting thing about you is still the, the sort of the lack of experience, uh -huh. you know, and, and you kind of know with all great marathon runners that it just it takes time, doesn't it? Yeah, so, and that was the reason why I picked London last year to start there. Um, um, having moved up from the steeplechase, it was, I need a good few years and, you know, a good four or five opportunities to almost learn the event more. Um, you know, you're going into the unknown with the marathon from having run 3,000 meters for many years, going to 26 miles, it's a completely different ball game, so. Was it, was it literally you went from steeplechase to marathon or was there an in-between? I took a year to do some longer distances and get used to running on the road because you know, when you're training for a steeplechase, you're purely on the track. So, um, yeah, it took a year to kind of get, kind of get used to that type of training. And then, um, you know, early 2010, uh, with London here last year, men, I would get quite a few shots of doing some good marathons before Olympic time, you know, if I qualified. So. And I mean, it's, it's nice actually having seen that you're, you're more than capable of running the distance, that your background could potentially help you because men's marathon running, it's, it's just every year it's just getting faster and yeah. faster and you know, you're not kind of seeing one or two, three guys going off the front, you know, down to the last five kilometers, <laughs> even less, you're seeing a big group of guys. So the yeah. fact that you know that you, you've got that speed must give you a lot of confidence as well. Yeah, and uh, it has helped actually, I've noticed that in training a lot on the long runs, uh, harder tempo runs, I've, I've been able to, you know, when you get to the last 5K of a 18 mile tempo run, you know, you know it, it's just going to go like that. So it's, um, it feels like nothing. So you really pick up the pace, and I've been able to do that really well. So come, you know, 
know, hopefully get to 20 miles on Sunday and six miles will be no time at all. So just race that. Yeah. And what, what was behind the decision to, uh, you're obviously a very successful Stickle Chase runner. You were British champion, I think, on three occasions. You went to Beijing, Beijing Olympics as a Stickle Chase. Mm -hmm. What was actually behind the decision to go, you know what, actually, I think I'm going to make a change here? London 2012. Um, I wanted to move, uh, for a long time I'd wanted to move up distances and um, it was kind of a calling, you know, I, I, I was itching to start marathon training and get one under my belt and uh, with four years to go it was, I, was, I thought, well, I might as well stop on the biggest stage in the world, you know, at the Olympics, let that be my last steeple chase and get on and that with that was your last steeple chase in yeah. Beijing, wow. So, yeah, it was <laughs> good to exit on that stage, so. Um, so the, the running genes don't just stop actually with you, or they didn't start with you. Your mum is also is a very accomplished runner, isn't mm -hmm. she? Tell yeah. us a little bit about your mum. Yeah, she um, she's been the one kind of helping me through my career, and kind of she she used to bring me down to this expo actually um, when I was 14, 15 years old, and I'd go around the course watching her and run beside her and. I'd always come down and I love the expo because I'd always try win shoes from different places and every single year we went uh, I won a pair of shoes so that was my motivation and she so from there uh, we were always going to the same races so it was really nice to have someone else in the family she's that was got, doing she's, that. She holds some records, Scottish records, doesn't she? Uh, she she's been Scottish national champion of quite a few times um, and you know she's now in her 60s so she's enjoying the the uh, veteran running scene and um, trying to do as well. Her. Unfortunately, living in America, yeah, I don't ever get to see a race, so... Um, so you must be very proud of her. Yeah, yeah, she's still out there doing it, and, uh, you know, she wants me to coach her now, but I, I can't do it, I can't do it. That's no. a great story. <laughs> coaching your mom, yeah. so you're tied up. Well, I do, I do a lot of online coaching already, and I just know if she wasn't doing the stuff, what I was asking her to do, you know, it, it, it's too close a relationship, yeah, I think. Yeah. I, I think yeah. Um, just going back finally to, to the race on Sunday, is it going to be a 1 2 3 African finish? I would imagine so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, anyone you. Anyone that could like squeeze in there, a European. Uh, a I'm not sure. Because we don't know how the race is going to unfold. Yeah, I mean, and all of us on the start line, you're not you're not ever thinking about who you're racing or what you're up against. You just go in and want to do the best you can physically um, to you know run fast from the start to finish. So I know every all the guys who are going to be on the elite field want to win the race. They've all got the same thoughts. They're all gunning to be first across that line. So that's. That's all you can hope for, yeah. And, and, and finally, the, the other British athletes racing, who, who are you looking to be competing against for, against for the Olympics? Yeah, I think Phil Wicks and Lee Marion, um, I think they've been training really well, and Phil's great over the longer distances, and he's paced here before, so he knows the course. So, you know, having Brits around only gives us that more competitive edge, you know, you can't back down at any second, so, you know, if we can get three guys on the team, that's going to be fantastic, because the last two years, the uh, last two Olympics, there's only been one guy on the team, so it'd be great to have, a, like, a, a little resurgence of British marathon running, so. Good luck for, for Sunday, Andrew, and uh, we'll have our fingers crossed for you, and I must say, you're looking really well and incredibly relaxed, so I think that all goes really well for a, a sub-12, um, 212 on a yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah, let's hope, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.